We want your app sheet app to automatically fill in the next fields based on the selection of a drop down. This is actually easy using the referencing with taking advantage of the ref type column. I've actually discussed this in our 5 best ways to create drop downs in app sheet. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure to click the link up here or maybe on the description. But this video is actually a response to one of our subscribers named Daniel Pais6457. And this is a comment from our dependent drop downs uh, video. If you haven't seen that video, the link would also be in the description. Okay? So the question of Danielle is how to make a field after being filled in, example a customer identifier, the next field is automatically filled in with the customer's name. So let's say you already have the registration and just need to reference it to the customer's ID or something of the general. He asks this because he hasn't found a way to use expressions to be able to filter and get the specific data he wants from another column even though he already has the key of that table. And this is actually easy using the referencing and we will give it another run through in this video. I am your app sheet Pinoy expert JP and just like many of you, I am so full of sheets. <laughs> All right, let's dive in. So what we have here is a simple table which we borrowed from our last video for app sheet looping. If you haven't seen that video, please Watch that would also be in the description, okay? Sorry if this is starting to feel a little pushy for you to watch my other videos, but I think you get value out of them, okay? All right, so um, we have a main table which has very simple fields. And of course, we have the non-negotiable columns as we describe in our best practices video. So what we want is to assign this to specific users. Right? And we have the users table down here, uh, which has the email address of that user, the name of the user, and the team that that user belongs to, for, for example. right? And we've already added the main table in our app sheet. And what we want is this assigned to, if we select a record, right? we want this assigned to, to pick a specific user from our users table so it's very easy all we have to do is add our users table like so and let's make sure that we set the email address as the key for this table and for now we'll just make it the label as well save it there you go. So let's go back to the main table. And for the assigned to email, we're going to make it a ref type column pointing to the users table. It is. And let's make it a drop down. Yep. And save it. So if we edit one of the records in our main table, the assigned to column would be a drop down picking from the list of users. Now, if you notice, there is actually a way for your users to create a new user in the user table, which launches the user tables form view. So here I can add additional users. And this is actually the difference between using a plain ref column and an enum ref column. Let me show you. If we make this an enum column with the base type ref and point it to the users table, then of course we will put a valid if to show us the list of emails, which is the key, from the users table. Like so, because it returns a list, right? Now the enum ref versus the simple ref column works exactly the same. The only difference is that it would not give your users the ability to add a new record to the reference table. So it depends on your use case, okay? But regardless, whether you use a ref type column or an enum ref column, 
they both work with dereferencing, which is exactly what Daniel Paez is asking in his comment. So what Daniel wants here is that as soon as he selects a user from the table, then the next fields would be automatically filled in based on that user. But what he wants is to return a different column from the reference table. So what Daniel wants is as soon as he selects a user from the main table, then he wants to automatically fill in the name and the team, which is a different column from the lookup key. And again, we will use the referencing. So as a review, which we've already covered in our five best ways to create dropdowns video, to the reference is to first get the value of a ref type column in the current table. Then find the matching value in the reference table. Then once found, returning the value of another column from there, which is the reference table. So it's actually very similar to VLOOKUP in Google Sheets or in Excel. And we simply need to use a dereference expression, and it works this way. So we have our main table where we have our ref type column. We have another text column, and we will be using a dereferencing expression, which works this way. And we put this expression in the app formula of that text column that we have. So as you see, the referencing actually uses the dot notation, right? So what this simply means is we want our formula to first get the currently selected ref ID from our current table, look it up to the reference table, and once found, we get another column, which is the column that we want, and return it to the formula, which would then be assigned to our MyText column. Did you get that? Let's see it in action. So first, we have to edit our main table, and we have to add the two columns that would return our user's name and the user's team. Right? So we put the name here. We put the team here. Then let's go back to our table and regenerate it. And we now have the two new columns that we added here. So as we've discussed, we will be using a dereference expression using the ref column that we have. In this case, our assigned to is our ref column, although this is actually an enum ref column, right? So what we want is that as soon as we select a user, we want the name in the team to automatically be filled in based on the selected user from the dropdown. So we'll use an app formula and use a dereference expression. So first, we need to point it to the ref or the enum ref column, which is the assigned to. And using the dot notation, we will find the name, right, from the reference table. Of course, we don't need this. There we go. And save it. And we use exactly the same principle for our team column. So we just say assign to, then team. There you go. So again, our formula says go to the assign to and look at what's currently selected. And then find that currently selected in the users table and return to me the column that I want. In which case, name and team respectively. So that's how we do it. So let's just save it and see it in action. As you can see, the name and the team columns are hidden from the form view because it is dependent on the selection made on the assign to drop down. And since no selection was made yet, then it's not yet visible, right? So we select user one and it should automatically fill in the name and the team column based on the selected user one drop down. So if we select user four, then it should show us user form, which belongs to team B. And if we select users five, then it should show us the name of user five, which belongs to team C. All right. So in a way, it's like a dependent dropdown, but really it's just a dereferencing expression 
working in the background using either a ref type or an enum ref type column. And other permutations you can do with this is that instead of selecting an email address for the users, because maybe it's going to be a user ID with a bunch of number combinations, right? All we have to do is go to the users table and select the name as the label, right? And as you can see, it's now showing us the username instead of the email. But since it's an enum ref column, or maybe it's a ref column, it would still save the key, which is the email address in the table, right? But now, similar to how we showed it in our five best ways to create drop downs video, it would be confusing for your users to see two columns which shows them the same information so what we just do is simply hide the name column because we don't need that anymore okay so if we click save and go to our google sheet then that automatically fills in the email address name and team in our google sheet as well and that's how easy it is to use the referencing in app sheet so Daniel Paez, I hope this video answers your question and I hope that this has helped all of the other subscribers we have who may have the similar question. So thank you for asking that. In our next video, I would show you how to do a batch updating action that would assign users to multiple records instead of opening them one by one like so. So stay tuned here in Full of Sheets and I hope to see you again. This is JP saying we are all Full of Sheets.